heaven. Come to you, Lord, to lift up everybody who comes into this platform, Lord Jesus, before you. And I pray, Lord, that you, that they would be able to hear from you today, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us <clears throat> as we come gathering, Lord, to pray for you. We wait patiently for you, Lord, because we know that you always listen. You hear our cry, Lord. And you bring us up, Lord. You lift us up, Lord, to new levels and new heights of your glory, Lord. And you set us up, you set our feet upon the rock, Lord, and you establish our ways. You establish our, our steps, Lord. Heavenly Father, as we wake up this morning and we sing and we praise and we lift up your, your name, Lord, we pray, Father, that you'd put a new song in our mouths and a new song in our heart, Lord. So that we may praise you, Lord. That, Lord, we may walk with your eyes. We may see with your eyes and walk with, walk with you in all that we do, Lord. Father, the world is just so divisive now because of this vaccination, Lord. Everybody has different opinions, Father God. Help us, Lord, to have your opinion, Lord. Help us to have your assurance and your confidence, Lord. Things are changing so quickly, technology-wise and our lifestyle and the way that we work. Everything is changing. Help us, Lord, to steady our hearts, Lord, so that we can just hold on to your truth and your way, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that you would establish us, Lord, as we come here so that we have that confidence and wherever, whatever we hear from the media, or from the words that other people are saying, Lord, we will not be shaken. And Lord, we know that we are blessed when we trust in you, when we make you our all, the beginning, the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, and at the end of the day, if we make you, Lord, Lord then we can put all our trust in you, and you will never leave us, Lord. You will never mm -hmm. let us down. And Father, help us, Lord, not to be proud. Help us, Lord to turn away from the wicked ways of the world that sometimes cause us, Lord, it rubs off on us, Lord. Help us to wa wash us in your blood, in your precious blood. And refresh our spirit, Lord. Refresh our Holy Spirit, Lord. Let us receive the your anointing, Holy Spirit anointing upon us today, this morning, Father. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your wonderful works. We thank you, Lord, that each time people speak on this platform, we are reminded of the, your marvellous works, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we will hear more testimonies, Lord. Thank so you, awesome. Heavenly Father, Lord, that uh, your, your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You think so much of us, Lord, and you love us, Lord. We are made fearfully and wonderfully by you, by your hands. Let us be reminded of that daily. So, Father, forgive us, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. There's times when I just have, I, I, I just, my, my thoughts come in alignment with the thoughts of the enemy. And mm -hmm. sometimes my soul feels weary or tired, Lord. Help me not to feel tired. Help me not to be fed up with this world, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that I can be glad, Lord. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I just always used to just wake up with so much joy. But what's going on around the world sometimes it make us weary. Mm. But Father, we just pray, Lord, for the, the anointing of your Holy Spirit, the aroma, that sweet aroma. May we have that aroma around us, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for my sister Donna. Thank you for her prayers. Thank you for Brother Keith. Thank you for Brother Daniel. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace. Thank you, Lord, for everybody who gathers on this platform every morning to come here and pray. Thank you for mm -hmm. Vivian, Lord. We come here, Lord, to hear from you, Jesus. And we just surrender all to you, Lord. In your holy name, Lord, I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you, Mother and Sister Joe. Father God, we come before you this morning. 
And Lord, we come with a word of praise, a word of thanksgiving this morning, Lord. We thank you for this new day, Lord. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glad in it. We thank you for the for the new morning, Lord. New mercies that are renewed each day. Mm -hmm. Father, I come before you this morning with a willing heart to seek you. We all do, Lord. And as my sister Jo said just now, sometimes, Father, we do feel weary. And sometimes there's things that are around us that become um, consuming, Lord. But we know, we know that we can come to you. We know that you will renew our strength, Lord. So, Father, right now, I just bring everybody before you this morning. And if any of us are feeling weary, if any of us are feeling distracted, Lord, if any of us are feeling burdened or tired, Lord, I just pray that you will strengthen us right now, that you will replenish us this morning, Lord. Lord, as we rested through the night, we slept safely in you, your angels encamped around us. And as we stepped into this new day, Father, Lord, I just pray that you uh, continue to to just replenish us as you did through the night, strengthen us, renew our minds, Lord. If there's any confusion, give us peace, Father. Mm -hmm. And Father, you, um, you are a loving, loving Father. You never change. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whatever we're feeling, you remain the same. You remain consistent with your love for us. You remain consistent in your understanding of each and every one of us. So regardless of our situation, our circumstances this morning, we bring that to you, Father. We bring it to you and we say, Father, strengthen us, hear us, guide us, Lord, and protect us. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I just bring this platform before you this morning. Mm -hmm. I pray for a hedge of protection around this place. Mm -hmm. I pray that no, nothing will come to steal the word today, Lord that no attacks from the enemy, you know, snare will come to infiltrate this platform, this safe place where your Holy Spirit, the comforter dwells. And Lord, the Holy Spirit dwells in each and every one of us. And we come together collectively this morning. May your Holy Spirit just reign across this platform. Truly reign. May this be a place where people will come for refuge and safety and know and security Safe in the knowledge that you truly dwell here, Lord. Safe in the knowledge that when we speak to one another, there will be words of support, words of comfort, words of guidance, words of righteous judgment when need be, but never of, hostili of hostility. Nothing to tear our brethren down. As my brother Keith says, may we always continue to be our brethren's keeper. And Father, I just pray that as the day goes forth, as a family, we come collectively <coughs> onto this platform this morning, that we will truly hear a word from you. Although the word may come from us, Individually, it will be a word that's directly from you, Lord. And I pray that this word will bless each and every one of us, resonate with each and every one of us, Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray that as the songs are ministered today, that they will truly bless, truly bless us. Mm -hmm. And that those songs will come to recall at times that we may just need that melody to, to lift us. And sometimes, Lord, the songs like the other morning I woke up singing a song and I know that you laid that on my heart, Lord. So, Father, I just, uh, I thank you for today and I thank you for the word that is coming forth. I thank you that we have been able to come into this new morning and together gather collectively as this impact of life on this platform and as a family. Mm. And, Father, I just bring everyone before you this morning you know, each and every one of us, you know, the deepest desires of our hearts. Father, I just pray that you will bless us or meet us in our place of need. And Lord, if we are feeling weary, 
just keep us, Lord, and give us, renew in us the faith that we will continue to press forward on our walk, that there will be no challenge that makes us feel downcast or defeated. To know that we can always continue to step forward in you, in the knowledge that you remain the same, that you remain steadfast, that your love never fails. Your love is consistent. Your love for us never changes. So Father, as we come to you this morning, we come with a, a word of praise on our lips, thanksgiving in our heart. And we come with hope, Lord. Hope for change. Hope for, for new things. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I just pray that you continue to increase us all. Mm -hmm. Increase us in our ministries. Increase us in our capacity to, to have, of love and of compassion and of understanding for one another here on this platform, for our families, in our places of work, <coughs> wherever we go, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I thank you. I do thank you for this family. I thank you for the friendships that you are growing here. I thank you for our, I want to say siblingship. I don't know if that's a word or not, but just our ability to stand as brother and sister with one another. Whether that be on the platform or off of this platform. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to, to be with us. And there are times where the journey, the road may feel tough and challenging but I thank you for always being our place of shelter our place of refuge our place of safety father lord we truly love you we love and adore you the first thing in the morning we think of is you to come and seek you here and I want to say a special prayer for the early risers that every morning the first thing they want to do is 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 to to come and fellowship here, Lord, and to just lift your name in praise. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts because you're worthy of all the praise, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this platform. I thank you for this family. And, Lord, as the word comes forth this morning, I just pray that we will not just hear it now, but it will just shape and mold us, Lord. You know, this walk is one that we can never be so assured that we know it all. There's learning to be done each and every day. So I pray that we come as children to you, Lord, and just open our hearts, open our spiritual ears, as my sister Jo will always say, and our eyes to the, the learning, what it is that you truly want us to see, what it is that you truly want us to hear and to learn so that we continue to grow in you each day, Lord less of us and more like you each and every day. In your precious name, Father, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Mommy? Yes, darling. Are you still on? One second, baby. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you. I am, um, this morning I am, um, opened my Bible in Hosea. Am I saying that right, Hosea? Yeah. And there's the healing for the repentant. Um, it's it's uh, number uh, chapter 14. And I just feel I want to read this this morning. I don't know why. I haven't read it fully. Um, but um, I'm going to read some of that if that's okay. So Hosea healing for the repentant. That's Hosea 14. Okay. Good. Okay, return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for your sins have brought you down. Bring your confessions and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive us all our sins and graciously receive us so that we may offer you our praises. Assyria cannot save us, nor can our war horses. Never again will we say to the idols we have made, you are gods. No, in you alone. Do, do the orphans find mercy? I'm sorry, I'm reading from the NLT. Oh. Uh, verse four. The Lord says, then I will heal you of your faithlessness. My love will, will know no bounds. For my anger will be gone forever. I will be to Israel like a refreshing dew from heaven. 
is where I will blossom like the lily. It will send roots deep into the soil, like the, like the cedars in Lebanon. Its branches will spread out like beautiful olive trees, as fragrant as the cedars in Lebanon. My people will, will again live under my shade. They will flourish like grain and blossoms like grapevines. They will be as fragrant as the wines of Lebanon. O oh, Israel, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I'm like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. Let those who are wise understand these things. Let those with discernment listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right, and righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble, stumble and fall. Mm. Amen. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so that was Hosea 14, and I read all of that. Mm. And um, I'm just going to read the end bit again, because that kind of really stood out for me. So, O oh Israel, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. Let those who are wise understand these things. Let those who discern listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right. and Righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. Amen. 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 Yes, it is perfect. Mm. And what you know, what I gather from that is that even when we're walking on the same path, but in those paths, the sinners will stumble and fall, but the righteous mm. live. Yes, by walking on them. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Oh Lord. It always Thank says you for your word this morning. me that even though those who are walking rightly can easily stumble mm. we have to live right and live not just with the discernment not just with the understanding but to continue to focus on god so if you mm. actually look at it in reverse in nine and then eight i do mm. that sometimes um he is the fruit god is the fruit that's continuously giving 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 but the thing is just like going back to eve we can eat of the wrong apple like this is something that i had to kind of research you can take from the same bush say a berry tree a good berry and a bad berry <laughs> You can pick the same tree, even from the, in fact, it's similar branches. It's not the same branch, but as you're picking them, you're not really, oh, yes, that, that little quarter, that little quadrant is the good part. No, you could take from the same part, a good berry and a bad berry. It all depends. Black, blackberries. On your, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You can, it's all depending on your perception, whether you view it, whether you choose it, or do you just grab it and gulp it? This is the same thing with truth, with consultation. It's the same thing with walking into a, a atmosphere or, or working with people or engaging with people. You can, it, depending on the, the fruit that you choose to see and whether you assess it or the fruit that you decide to just, you know, what, I'm going to swallow this because previously it was good, but you mm. worked out later on it's bad and that will make you stumble. It's mm. easy for us. We have to trust in his fruit, not the world's. Oh. Powerful. Mm. Very powerful. Mm. Very powerful. Amen. You know, um, it was slightly. It was what you. What I was thinking then was slightly off topic, but I don't know. If, before I start going off on a little tangent, I don't know. Good morning, everybody. Daniel, I can see that your hand is up. Um, would you like to say something, Daniel? No, you speak first. Go on. Everybody no, because it was it was going slightly off on a tangent. And I won't. So if you're going to say something, please. Uh, okay. Do yeah yeah okay okay um yeah <laughs> yes you want me to talk sorry you want me to talk yes please daniel okay <laughs> well you see what's happened um okay i i made a note of what what i had to say because the lord was speaking to me this morning quite clearly um so i just want to pray for i'm, I'm supposed to pray for impact to life ministry so i want to pray and then we're two or three gather god is in our midst we know that so um, I'm just going to pray for Impact Alive Ministry. 
and I wrote it down, I made notes of it. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, unite our hearts to care for your flock. Lord, we decree that of all you have given us, we have lost none. We reap the harvest and call in the laborers for the perfecting of the saints and to edify the body in love. In your name, we keep and watch over the souls that are one. We bind up the broken, we love one another and mature them to perfection in Christ. We honor the pastor of this house. We thank you, Lord, for pastoral leadership, prophetic utterance, expanding evangelistic, evangel evangelistic outreach, effective teaching and pastoral covering and care. We release and we anoint this place, Impact Alive Ministry, with your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, because by grace we have been saved and not by works, to win the lost and nurture your flock. In Jesus' name, amen. And then amen. I have a Bible verse. I have a Bible verse to back that up, to, you know, to back it up. And it comes from, the, the Lord said, go to the book of Ephesians. So I went to the book of Ephesians. And then uh, he said, chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. And it reads like this. Ephesians chapter 4, 23 to 24. Make a note. <laughs> Goes like this. Word of God. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. I say amen to that. Big amen to amen. that Bible. Amen. Um, Daniel, I loved and, your prayer, I have to say. Yeah, it's just yeah. to the point, you know, I just thought, you know what, Impact of Life Ministry needs to, to move forward. I'm talking about, you know what came to me as well, what God said to me, he said, you've got to tell the, the people of the church who are backsliding um, to come back to Jesus. We've all been there. We've all been there. Okay, I've been there. But the, peop the, the, the brothers and sisters who are backsliding, he told me, you need to tell them, get back on that word, get back on the Bible, get back on prayer life get back on fellowship with other people, you know, that's what he told me, so anyway, <laughs> glory to God in the highest, I, I, thank you for listening to my voice in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, but do you know what else your prayer said to me, was that, um, and I suppose it's kind of what I, I pray for in the morning, is that we just, as, as an impact to life family, that we remain supportive, that we remain united, and that we kind of stand with one another in prayer, and um, mm -hmm. at times where it may be that we just, you know, w this is a place that people will come and say um, the, the deepest things that are in their hearts and their minds um, that maybe wouldn't say uh, to another church platform. Um, there's something very unique and special about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel that as a, as a platform, as a family, we try to to support, encourage, and stand with one another in prayer. So I felt that when you you, you read your prayer, it, it kind of embodied all of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Amen. To God be the glory. Prayer. To God yeah. be the glory. Amen. To Amen. God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Absolutely as well, Vaveen. As Vaveen just put, you know, about um, also honoured those who shepherd us. So, um, like, you know, like senior leaders like Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace. So. Yeah, it was, a, it was a beautiful prayer, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you for reading that this morning. And I'd like to wish you all a very good morning. Um, I'm going to call you all in the list as it is on my phone. Um, good morning, Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, Fiona. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Tan, and good morning, Vaveen. I trust that you are all well this morning, um, that you had a restful night. Good morning. Good morning, Elaine. That you had a restful night um, and that you've woken up well this morning. Um, it's good to see you all on this morning, and I hope that today will bring us all many good things. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah, um, Donna, I would like to pray. Um, Absolutely. Pray for us and for those who are sharing. I'm not, I wasn't here right at the beginning, so I'm not sure what um, Daniel did say. But I just felt it must be just to lift people up. Please do. Thank you, Elaine. You're welcome.
Heavenly Father, you are my source. You are everything that I need and that we all need, Father. You are our creator, our father, our brother, our sister. We come into you, to your presence, Father, to be nurtured, to be loved, to be comforted, to be guided. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, as we begin to share, it's always hard, Father, to, um, to talk about what's on the inside of us. So I just want to lay that comfortness so they are able to pour out the hearts, Father God, because we all need help. We all need guidance to remove the burdens, to receive peace, to receive healing in Jesus' name. Mm. Because you make us whole and you want to unify us, Father God, as one complete and wholeness to us all, Jesus. So, Father God, I'm asking that you'll be there with each and every one of us. Make a way for us to share, to open up our, our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, whatever burdens, hurts, pain, sorrows, Lord Jesus, what's going on, all the negative corrosion you're saying, that's what it does to us. It corrodes us, it breaks us down. To reveal it, Father God, to reveal the darkness that's trying to hide in every corner of our lives. Being light there to everyone's situation. Be a place where we can share everything, Father God, whether here, at home, in a quiet corner, but to reveal all to you so you know what to say to us, where we can reveal where we can start to be healed, Father. Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. We want to stand strong. We want to stand tall. We want to stand as the people you've created us to be, mm. your workmanship. Labors for you, Father. We want to be ready. We want to be open. We want to be quick, fast, slow, wherever you want us to be and go wherever you want us to go. We may not understand what we're going through, but I know it's to make us stronger. I know that it, it is to make us be available and to be there and help others that may go in the same situation. We are leaders and we are to be led by you, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit to flow with you, Father. Help us to share and care, being kind. Kindness is what the world is saying, kindness. Hallelujah. Because you say there's plentiful work, Father, but very few laborers. Mm -hmm. Help us to step up, to step forward, to be, be ready. Hallelujah. There's so much for us to learn and to grow and to Amen. do. But the time is not waiting for us. It's not standing still. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Jesus, you are Lord. And your name is to be lifted on high. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how are we doing this? How are we glorifying the Father? How are we glorifying you, Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By standing where we are in our cesspit, in our brokenness, in our hurt. Hallelujah. In the darkness. Hallelujah. 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 Hiding behind one another. Hiding that we're not speaking. We're keeping our pains. Hallelujah. We're not sharing, we're not caring, Father God. Break it, Father God. Change us, hallelujah. Renew our minds, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us lift up our holy hands to you in reverence, in fear of you, mighty God, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us sing, rejoice, hallelujah, hallelujah. In our iniquities, hallelujah. Let us praise you, Father God. No matter what we are feeling, Jesus, it's not about our, our feelings. It's about what is right, our righteousness, right standing with you. 
That's who we are. Regardless of what the enemy's cloaks, he puts on us, Father God, because we are pure and holy because of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What you've done for us, what you've given us, it is about you being the center of our lives, of our world, of our universe, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help us, Father God, to draw near to you with a sincere heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because no, even though the weapons are being formed, you said that um, you said that you've removed our burdens as far as east is from the west, our hurts, our pains, our sins, that you remember them no more because of love. Let us use the love that has been shed forth in our hearts to each other. Hallelujah. Uncomparative, you said. We're not comparing one another as best friends, because you are our best friend. Hallelujah. No one is above you, and we are not above each other, and we are not below each other. Jesus, help us to be more sensitive, because you said that before about being sensitive. Let us be more sensitive, Father, because let us recognize this in our own selves, because it is about you and the power of God. Hallelujah. By your spirit, Jesus. By your spirit, not ourselves, by your spirit, Jesus. Let us be powerful because of you, because you're leading us. So we, we touch one another, Father, because there is a change, and a change is coming, you say. Hallelujah. And I want to be there where that change is. I want it to happen to me. May it happen to us all according to you. You, you, Father God, your will, your will be done in our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because the word is here, not just for show. It is active. And we have to activate that in our lives, Father Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loyalty to you, mighty God. And that's what he wants, our loyalties to him. We must fear you, Father God. Fear you. Hallelujah. Not reject you. It's not about it's not right, the time and everything else, Father God. It doesn't matter what we see on the outside, what is going on, all this turmoil, the storms stirring up around us, tornadoes, Father God. We must still hang on to you and your word. Get it activated in our lives, in our hearts, Father. Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Heaven's awake. Help us to be alive and alert, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Those who are coming to you, so we have to come to him and say we have to go to our father Jesus and want these things change our mindset hallelujah glory to God have an understanding he said hear what the spirit is saying to the churches hear 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 he says hallelujah glory open our ears father God if we are not hearing enough Jesus hallelujah if it's not our will we because we, we can't change it's our will so help us oh God for our will to be your will our will to be your will. That's what we want in our lives. And not just saying it, but believing it and activating it, Father God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, have your way today. Have your way, Father God. Take charge, take control. If we have to close up our mouth, close up our mouth, Father God, because I know you can do all things. If you're not saying enough, help us to speak it out, Father God. Help us to receive all that we need to receive. Overflow us, Father God. Saturate us with your blood. Saturate us in the word, Father. Jesus, hallelujah. We are children of God. Hallelujah. We are oh, yeah, priesthood, you said priesthood. Royal priesthood. We are kings and queens here on this earth, Father God. But even though we are here in this earth, we're in it, but we're not of it. We are of you. Help us to remain that way, Father. Do whatever it takes in our lives, for. Because as we're running away, there's only a few of us that's going to pass the finishing line. And I want to be one of them. Some may be slow, some may be fast, some may be in between. But help us to run past that finishing line to you in your open arms, Father. Because you love us. We belong to you. We have a mark of ownership. Hallelujah. And thank you for that, Father God. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's like a stamp. 
Let us be clean. Let us be lovely. Let us be holy. Hallelujah. Let us bow down to you, Father God, Jesus. You are welcome in this place anytime, Father. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Hang on, hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Bless you all. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Welcome. Welcome, Pauline. Um, Pauline's uh, tuning in from Australia. Welcome. Oh, praise God. Uh, Tanisha, welcome. Amen. Dorcas is tuning in from uh, Kenya. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Welcome, okay. uh, Cheryl. Um, Morning. She's tuning in from London. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love <Amen>. London. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rest of you are all tuning in from London. So praise yeah, be yeah. to God. Welcome, um, God. Master Ziri. Oh, good morning. Effie, God. Cheryl, um, again, <laughs> Elaine, Vivine, Joanna, um, Donna, Keith, Fiona. Good morning. And um, Daniel. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You. Today is another great day. Uh, Troy and welcome. Uh, we are, we are, I trust that you all come to this forum to, with great expectation of what God will say and what he will do. Um, and I always say that expectation is a key of, key of life in many mm -hmm. cases. What do mm -hmm. you expect? to be, uh, What do you believe to receive? What is your expectation if someone promises you something? There is a sense of expectation. A child, if you promise a child something, in most cases, a child never forgets. And in expectation, they're already celebrating because they're believing that they've already received it. And so there's a level of excitement. Yeah! You see? Um, so we can't be downcast as Christians because God has promised us so much, especially through his grace especially through Jesus Christ, who himself paid the price that we might have all things. Amen. So we come with expectation this morning that we, we're going to receive something that we, will enrich our lives, whether in relationship, uh, whether in singlehood, whether in marriage, we are continuing on this theme. And uh, we truly want to thank God because this is another great day of opportunity to grow in his grace amen so far so um i really just uh wanted to just share um a, a psalm um and it's really one of praise and so we, we're gonna give god time um just to give give god our time to praise him and just to lift him up and just to acknowledge him. And um, it, it says in Psalms 103, um, and I'm just going to re read the certain passages from that psalm. Verse 1, bless. In other words, praise. Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget any of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. Verse 11, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his 
loving kindness towards those, those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. You know, um, you have to understand, um, David was speaking from, speaking prophetically from revelation of the grace of our mighty God. He recognized the love of God. This wasn't, he wasn't a born again Christian as we are today. But he is one that loved God and trusted him and, and recognized that he was a God of grace and he was a God of love. Even before we truly received grace through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so he's recognizing that <laughs> these words are so, so deep. Let me just read from um, verse 11 again. For the heavens are high above the earth, and so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. So when the enemy is pointing the accusing finger at you and saying, you are condemned, you can say, no, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed my transgression, transgressions from me. Just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. For he knows our mortal frame, he remembers that we are merely dust. Verse 17 of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who reverently fear him and his righteousness to children's children, his righteousness to children's children. And so oftentimes we think about the curse from generation to generation, but we ought to think about his righteousness from children to children. is key in many cases in terms of oppression, depression, downtrodden, feeling cursed, expectation. Who are you serving? If you serve God with all your heart, with awe, with a sense of reverence and, and deep worship, then you've got to know that God is with you and God is for you. So um, 18 says, to those who honor and keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments, imprinting them, imprinting his word on their hearts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all the universe. Praise be to God. And that's a word for each and every one of us, just to encourage you that you are blessed and you are highly of, of the Lord. And it's something that they recognize. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul and all that is in within me. And we, can, we can say the same thing. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul and all that is within me. Who's in you this morning? Is Christ in you? the hope of glory. You can bless the Lord with Jesus Christ this morning. He dwells in your innermost beings this morning. So you can bless the Lord with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, with all your emotions, with all your will, with all your mind, with everything you have, you can truly bless the Lord with all your soul. And it's so important to give God thanks for his goodness for his mercy, 
for his love, knowing that his loving kindness and his mercies endure forever. And they are new every morning. So you don't go to bed downcast and depressed and wake up with no hope and no expectation. You wake up with a fresh hope and a fresh expectation because God is a God of new beginnings. New every morning, not every month. Some people wait to the end of the month. Feel a sense of, belo <laughs> sense of belonging or sense of worth because that's when they get paid. <laughs> So when their wages drop into their account, they think, wow, I feel refreshed now. But that is temporal. That is temporal. Our mercy, God's mercies towards us are new every morning. And he lavishes us with his loving kindness and his favor new every morning. Expectation. What's your expectation? We can't dwell on temporal things we've got to dwell on the eternal things in christ that are from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting praise be to god so i just want um us to take this time right now just to thank god for his mercy for his faithfulness his loving kindness and his faithfulness is better than life itself Life as we um, understand it, it is better than that. And so let's just unmute and let's just give God thanks and praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him that we're alive in him this morning. And we're not waiting. We're not waiting on that end of month, but we know that we are renewed day by day though our outward man perish our inward man is renewed day by day our inner man our inner man hallelujah the, the triunion god dwells father son and holy spirit praise be to god so lift up your voices this morning and just glorify his great name he is worthy of all praise Unmute every one of you, just oh, unmute and just give God the your thanks and soul. praise. He's worthy of it. Bless the Lord, 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 and in a great hope father you are a lively hope through Jesus Christ, and we thank you. And so, Father, as even we have been risen with you this morning, we do seek those things which are above, where your Son, Christ, sits on the right hand side of you in all authority and all majesty, in all strength, having all principalities and powers under his feet. And Father, we give you thanks and we praise because you have given us the gate same excellence and the same greatness because of your shed blood towards us and that we have been born from above so father we thank you that our generations have been blessed father this morning our children are blessed this morning everything we touch is blessed this morning is empowered to prosper father 
Father, we thank you because of your great love towards us. We love you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. For there is none like you. You are God all by yourself. And we glorify your great name. We glorify your great name. We glorify your great name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty and great name. Amen. And let everybody say amen. And amen. Amen. amen to the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. You know, um, we've been addressing um, the topic of uh, singlehood, relationships, and marriage. And, um, you know, it's oftentimes that uh, we don't really embrace the full extent of uh, what it is to be married and what is expected of one another in marriage. What is the core reason for marriage? Yes, we know that it's to replenish the earth. Two people coming, to work, coming together as one to bring forth. It doesn't always happen, but there's something that God wants us to experience in our lives. And that is his love living in and through us that we're, we're enabled to administer his love in, in its many folded aspects, not only to humanity, but to our spouse and all that we come into contact with. So I'm just gonna, um, like I do, just lay a foundation and um, and this is a scripture that we <laughs> we often hear in wedding ceremonies it's read I don't believe it's fully understood but it's read anyway and uh, the thing is you can read a scripture like this and uh, within 24 hours be fighting with one another and arguing as a married couple. But it's um, it's um, 1 Corinthians 13 and um, verse four. And I'm gonna to read to verse seven. And uh, this is a bedrock and the foundation and should be the foundation of every, every marriage. And it says, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked. You should have taken this slide to... Nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account Sorry. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. This is verse five. It is not provoked nor overly sensitive and easily angry, angered. It does not take into account a wrong, a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when the right and truth prevail. Love bears all things regardless of what comes. Believes all things, looking for the best in each one. Hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times. Endures all things without weak, weakening. In fact, love, the God kind of love, the agape love, never fails. 
<laughs> so why is why is so many um Christian marriages failing? Why this why is the divorce rate so high? Maybe you're not ex exercising the true love of God, the agape love, the unselfish love, the love that gives and is only there to serve and continue to give and to lift up your partner. And so many times um, when uh, I'm sitting with a married couple, it's always the blame game. It's that person's fault, most times. It's because he done this, he done that, he she done this, she said this, he behaves like that. He, and I think, take time out, time out, ding, ding, ding. By the time, <laughs> by the time you uh, go through the counseling, it's almost like a boxing match. Who's out for the count of 10, you see? And everybody's ducking and diving and uh, as, as uh, Frank Bruno would say, ducking and diving, you know what I mean, <laughs> Harry, you know? Everybody's ducking and diving. No one's taking responsibility for their own actions. And here it is very clear that it's, it's every person's responsibility to love as God loves us, as God loves. And if it wasn't the case, he would not have written it in his word. And so we can speak about many things, but the true bedrock and foundation of every successful, fulfilled marriage is based on these scriptures. It has to be based on, based on these scriptures. Love endures with patience. So you get married. And uh, you recognize now that when you get married, it's not the um, fairy tale that you expected. You know, um, <laughs> in actual fact, you might even be a little terrified as uh, your partner takes off the wig and the makeup and everything else. And you think, oh, <laughs> oh. I see, I see. Mm, okay. Might not have been your expectation, but things change because the reality now is come see somebody and come live with somebody. It's two different things. That's the reality. And sometimes our brain and our emotions can't, can't, can't quite comprehend all of that at, within one night or two days <laughs> so the reality we think wow what have I got myself into some cases I'm what I'm saying is that love endures with patience you see you have to truly love the person knowing that there are personality traits that are different from yours you cannot expect the person to think like you speak like you act like you, it's impossible because we're all created uniquely. So what is it? You have to adapt to one another through the grace and the love of God. And you have to be patient. There has to be a serenity of love because sometimes what it is, you have such high expectations. The first time you hear someone disagree with you, <laughs> you think, oh, 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 oh. He's disagreed with me. She's disagreed with me. And it might be in a way that is, can be quite offensive because you know what? It's high expectation. And before what it is, you would have been glancing at one another across the table with a little candlelight flickering and your hearts are pumping and racing just for, at the excitement of seeing one another. And you're talking, talking all um, sweet nothings to one another and everything else. And then reality sets in. You're in the home with the person that you now say that you love. And what is it now? He done what? 
he threw his socks down at the side of the bed. <laughs> he didn't even hang it up. His smelly socks. And you're thinking, I can't live with this. And in the first two days, you're in uproar. He did what? He, he left the dishes for me to wash up when he messed up everything. You know, all these things. And I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm talking, but I'm talking from a perspective of reality. These things happen because we are different personalities. And to say that, oh yeah, I just embraced the person because I loved them because they were perfect in all their ways. That's not true. You, you, you have two different minds. You will agree, disagree. Even at 38 years of marriage, we still disagree about certain things. But you know what? It's mutual. We agree to disagree, but there doesn't have to be fighting. I disagree about grace as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I disagree about it. <laughs> it's, no, it's no problem. But we disagree and agree in love. You, you understand? In love. So it doesn't detract. We don't detract from one another. We don't tear one another down. I don't, well, personally, I don't believe I've ever said a hurtful or negative word to Grace in, call, in terms of calling her names. Because that destroys, your, your, you're in effect destroying yourself. And both of you have been brought together as one. One heart, one soul, one mind. And it's a process of development through God's grace. And it says, um, love is kind and thoughtful. Kind. Love is kind and thoughtful within the context of a marriage or in a relationship or just interacting or with, friendship. You know, in friendship. Love is kind and thoughtful. You're always thinking about the well-being or the best of a person, how you can help them, how you can assist them, how you can take the pressure off them. Not just coming in and saying, where's my slippers? Where's my dinner? Put, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, look, I know that happens. So I can, I can say that. You know, I want, and even if sometimes you don't consider your partner, can't, you don't consider that perhaps she's been out to work as well. And maybe you could have surprised her and cooked the meal and brought her the slippers and massaged her toes. Sorry. Uh, well, Grace said, mm-mm. <laughs> what are these things? <laughs> you go there, Pastor. Go there. That he's never, that he, he's never done that to my feet. Uh, I've cleaned uh, your feet. I've cleaned because your feet. probably your <laughs> I'll be your I've cleaned their feet many times. It's Guess what's going to happen? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying. Different strokes for different folks now, please. We don't all do the same thing because it's what suits the marriage, the two people, what comforts the two people, what enhances the two people, what pleasure they derive from one another in love. So there's no blueprint for marriage. You can't say number one to number 10, you do it exactly like this because we're different personalities. Two people have two different personalities and they have to adjust to one another. So it's being thoughtful and it's not jealous or envious. Jealous or envious. You know, it's in situations you can have a partner, even a dear wife, who actually earns more than a man. And uh, you don't want, you, you feel threatened by that. Insecurity comes in and uh, you think, no, 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 you don't go out to work. I have to go out to work. I, you know, the sense of envy and jealousy comes in. Or it is that, that you are being more recognized than your other partner. The sense of envy and jealousy comes in. You are one. 
And when you are one, what is yours is mine and what is mine is yours. You share it mutually and you reflect one another. You reflect the Christ in one another. And so there shouldn't be the element of jealousy or envy. You are not, you should not be envy, envious or jealous of one another. And it goes without saying, when it comes to life itself, there are times in life when you might not be, there are seasons for everybody. I believe that. There's assignments for everything, everyone in life. And it might not be your season when you're flourishing. It might be your time in your season where you're seeding and you're not harvesting. The time when you're seeding, it's not for your partner to say, well, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing, you might be studying. You might be in an apprenticeship. You might be doing something that prepares you to that next level that God is gonna elevate you. You don't decry the partner. You don't beat them up and say, well, I'm, I have to be taking all the burden and everything else and you're just, as long as he's ambitious and he loves you, stay with him, be patient, be believing, be expecting, <laughs> be, be all. That's what it says. What does it say? Love endures with patience and serenity, not argument, serenity. I didn't write the Bible. I'm only expressing truth. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. Brag. You don't brag in a sense that you're better than somebody else. And in your bragging, you're really just putting down the next person, your partner. So you're blessed and you're gifted. All good gifts come from the Father of of light from which there is no shadow of turning. It's not that you're gifted to the point you're better than somebody, but that's the gift that God has given you. So what do you do? You enhance one another with your gifts. You elevate one another, elevate your partner with your gifts. Empower them so that they can be maximized in their gifts, the graces that have been given to them. That's what true love is all about. I'm not saying, well, look, <laughs> What have you got? What have you brought to the table? And just decry the, uh, uh, you know, the, your partner. It is not rude. You know, it is not rude. In other words, it's not brash. You know, rude. You just say, speak anyhow. No respect. Disrespecting, dishonoring. Ir irrespective of how you're being treated. Don't revile, don't lash back, be gracious, don't be rude. You know, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that eat the fruits thereof shall live by them, whether they be life or death. And sometimes what you've done you said things in the heat of the moment, many of you in relationships, and it comes out like a machine gun and it did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. And you, you're murdering one another with your mouths and you're speaking curses over one another. Is it any, is, is it of no surprise that those relationships become shipwrecked because the enemy rides on your words and in fact when you're actually shooting them at your partner you're really shooting them back at yourself because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and because your words are spirit and they're alive in actual fact you have the power to create and so what you do with your words and you create your atmosphere Instead of enhancing it, you destroy it. Find the best in one another to talk about. If you don't enjoy something, be, pe be at peace, be still. 
and truly know that God is God, that God will, through his wisdom and through his grace, bring about a solution to that situation. But the moment you enforce negativity, negativity continues to grow because you're watering on it. And I, I'm, I'm speaking broadly now because you all know and you can all think about your own relationships, past, present, where these things have happened and you serve and you remain to regret some of the words that you spoke. But in saying that, what do you do? The, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath because wrath is more than anger. You just see red. Red means like you feel so incensed that sometimes you feel like, <laughs> needn't I say, killing the person. And we know that happens within marriages. You might not kill them by virtue of taking their life, but you kill them with your thoughts and your words and your actions. And I've seen it. I've seen it. And I think, what? That's so destructive. Okay, so it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It's not about I, me, and myself. It's about how can I enhance my partner? How can I sow into my partner? How can I elevate my partner? How can I support my partner? Or my husband or my wife or my fellow human being? How can I do that? How can I do that? Is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered, as I said. It does not take into account a wrong endured. In marriages, one mistake. Okay. So we, we know we're human and we're susceptible to make mistakes as human beings. But for the grace of God, where would we truly be? Every one of you, you can speak of the goodness of God and how he's forgiven us and he lets the offense drop. But sometimes the thing happened a year ago, the incident happened a year ago. And you, and every occasion you bring it up. No grace, you bring it up. Always regurgitating the past, regurgitating and actually destroying the very fabric and the foundation of your relationship. No, forget the offense. Let it drop. Forgive. How many times? Eternally forgive. Eternally forgiving doesn't always mean eternally enduring, continual, habitual wrong in a relationship. It says forgive, let it drop, let it go. But the reality is that stop talking about something that happened 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago because it's killing your relationship. Stop it. What about God? What if God did that to us? Well, this is not the first time you messed up. Look how many times. And because God knows everything and he's not and he's not um suffering from amnesia or alzheimer's he remembers everything yet he doesn't remember everything because of the blood of jesus the moment you say lord forgive well i didn't even remember that anyway what are you talking about god is gracious we should be gracious with one another is it no wonder that re many re relationships should break down because you're continually regurgitating weaknesses instead of enhancing them and saying, let's, let us work at it because you are one, you are one body. Let us work at it, not, ah, you have to do it. You are gonna have to be the one that change. you, it's your fault. Think about what you might do to enhance that relationship. Did you make an effort to just love him or love her and support? 
the person through that difficult time? Or was you the one that was always reminding that person of their shortcomings, their failings, their weaknesses? God forbid if God was like that. Forgive as Christ also forgave you. So important. And verse six says, it does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with truth when right and truth prevail. And it does not rejoice at injustice. Good. That's right. They deserve it. No, 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 no. We shouldn't have that attitude. Even if people do suffer as a result of their wrongdoings, or even in a sense of injustice, we should be gracious. You don't rejoice at people's failings. You don't rejoice when seemingly things don't work out. You know, there are people that I know, they're looking for somebody to slip up. Immediately they slip up. You say, see that? I told you. I told you so. They're rejoicing. They're, glor they're, being, they're glorifying over the fact that, yeah, see that? I told you. No, that's not, that, that's not love. Love covers a multitude of sins and misgivings. That's true love. You don't have to highlight everything to destroy the person or be malicious. Have the grace within a relationship. And I'm talking about marriage. I'm talking about our own relationships with one another. So important. It does not rejoice in at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each other. That is the true essence of marriage. You are forever looking for the best in one another. Wow. And you're celebrating that within your relationship, not for the negative things, not for a get out clause. I'm out of here. Now let me look for the worst in the person and see how I can get out of this prison, this bondage. Look for the best and enhance the best in the person and see if that person will then change when you start speaking life into the person. Resuscitate the person. Don't leave them for dead. Seek the best, looking for the best in each other. Hopes all things remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. You endure all things without, that's, that's the strength of God's love. It has backbone. It has backbone, sorry. Not feeble and, oh, you know, wimpish. It has backbone. Let us have backbone with one another to bear one another's burdens. Let us bear one another's burdens within relationship but in marriage, whether you be single, whether you be in a relationship, or whether you be in marriage, it's the same thing. It's all about God's love, the agape love. And so, as I said, we often hear it read in the context of the vows or a marriage ceremony, but we truly don't understand what it really means. And if we did, we had received a revelation of it. Many of us, after a few months, our marriages wouldn't be shipwrecked or relationships. So it's important to 
always stand on the foundation of, of who God is. God is love. There's no depth, there's no height, there's no width, there's no breadth to God's love. His love is from everlasting to everlasting. It's eternal. God changes not. Hallelujah. And I know that you might say, well, we're all human beings. Yeah, but I just said, and it says in his word that that's the love that we should possess as believers. So it's possible. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, then we have the capacity to love like that. But one thing I realize, if you don't cultivate that love, if you don't exercise that love, if you don't take the initial steps to act right, you'll never act like that. If you don't take the steps to think right, you'll never think right. It's a lifestyle. It's not something you put on and take off when it, fit, when it fits. It's not something you even do when you're in front. You know what? I was going to say what annoys me. Uh, you know what um, is quite agitating? is that when you see people, couples before you, their sweetness and light, when reality, you know that it's like a war zone in their marriage. And, um, you know, it's, it's very destructive, but, you know, it's a front. When it's a front, but you, you, can, you can sense the pain. You can sense that. So many women, even men within the context of, they're so down, their spirit is down, but they may smile, but their spirit is down. I'm not fooled by lipstick and how you dress. And we, we're so, I'm going to say we're so shallow sometimes because we see someone in a, a beautiful outfit on a Sunday and we say, oh, you're looking so beautiful. And the person is going through a nightmare. And we never have the sensitivity to know that that person needs encouragement, prayer, guidance, love, just a word. And so let us just take off the mask that we often wear and just be real and true to what we're going through. Ask God to be the center and the spine of our relationships our marriages and enable God to enhance and season your relationships. And the re reality is this, when you can express the love of true love of God, that's where true intimacy comes in. True intimacy. And when I say true, it becomes divine. Can sex be divine? Yes, it can. You can the purity of God's love because if there are so many things that are racing through your mind negativity bad behavior and all that type of thing do you think you're going to have true intimacy Inter and true intimacy is just not the sex act it's about sharing everything with one another sharing your emotions, sharing your aspirations, your dreams, everything, planning together, the spiritual aspect of your being, sharing that, revelation. What greater joy than it is to be with a partner and you can share your revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. What greater joy? Yet some people say, well, they've got a great marriage, but they're not even saved. They haven't mm. got the highest revelation of what true relationship is, but they're good people and they have a, um, from a human perspective, they have a good marriage. But Amen. there's no higher truth than to know that you walk in love and in the love of God, the love of Christ. Amen. There's no greater or higher level than to excel to. So remember this that the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit, and you have the propensity and the ability to love 
as God loves. Bless you. Just wanted to lay that as a foundation. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. be to God. Hallelujah. So um, I really just gonna, I just really want to pray because I realize that sometimes we can feel so short. We come short of his glory. Glory means all that God represents, all his goodness, all his kindness, all his mercy. And what it is, it's irrespective of you, your behavior, what you do, what you think, your status, your ability. It's God's glory. That means his great love towards us. He wants to pour out. And if we can just realize that, God loves us so much that when he thought about the institution of marriage, he was thinking about from the perspective of the love that he shows humanity, mankind, how two people can become one, just like the Godhead is one, that you can, you can hardly distinguish one from the other because they have the one heart. And that's what God wants us to do, to be meshed together that not only that you look alike, so many people think that Grace and I look alike, we have resemblance, even think that we are truly related, God forbid, in a sense that we're brother and sister, but the reality is that God wants us to be alike in the spirit as one. Amen. That's the most important thing. Mm. And uh, sometimes it is that you grow on each other and that you do begin to look like more like one another as you grow, grow old, older I suppose but they said that I was at the very beginning they were very concerned but in concern in a way that we look so much alike we had the same smiles and everything else and uh, but the important thing is is that I just really want to pray that God will speak to you through this um, passage of scripture and that you will receive revelation through it for yourself and that you will grow in terms and the perspective of how you see a relationship, how you see a marriage, that you will see it from a God perspective rather from a human perspective. Remember this, be not conformed to this world's way of thinking, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know that which is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And remember I said G, good, A, acceptable, and P, perfect. Only Christ, God in you, can fill that void and that gap. Amen. Only God can do that. Christ is the only one that can fill that gap. That Hallelujah. sense of, oh, I want this, I want that. And Christ. Once it's Christ-centered, you have the perfect foundation for any relationship and for any marriage. So I'm just going to pray. And uh, I, then I'm just going to open it up for the platform just to express and share. And um, praise be to God. Heavenly Father, again, I just thank you. I thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy towards each and every one of us. By grace are we saved, delivered, healed, set free, made whole. By faith, it is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. It's not by works, our own outworking, lest any man should boast. But we know it's because of your great love towards us. And because of that, you have an assignment for our lives. That we, knowing that we are your workmanship, we are your work of art, your masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which beforehand you have ordained us to walk in. You have a divine assignment before the foundation of the world. And divine assignment means that even our partners are chosen by your divine right. Ultimately, when you're thinking of us, you're even including 
our relationships, those that you would connect with us and those that we should connect with. You know the end from the beginning. Even our life partners, you know them that you have divinely chosen for us. And so, Father, I pray that as we walk in obedience to your will and to your way, that many will find that path of true happiness. Uh, and when I say happiness, true joy in knowing you first and knowing that you have assigned everything that, so that you can say it is good. It is very, very good. And that will have eternal ramifications, not only here on earth, but into eternity in your presence. Father, I thank you. And I pray your strength upon each and every one of us, Father, even as they've heard the word, listen, Father, that they would take heed of the word and apply it to every aspect of their life. And so even in preparation, for marriage, Father God. They will not be found wanting on that day when they say, I will, I do, I will, I do, I will, I do. That they will have the sense of fortitude and strength to know that by your grace, that they will seek to make that relationship, that marriage work from a foundation of Christ. Father, I pray you are a God of more than enough. And so, Father, we expect the best from you, and we believe for the best from you, and we receive the best from you. I rebuke every spirit of negativity right now. The very residue of the past I eradicate from the hearts and minds of your people right now. Father, cleanse them, make them whole. Cleanse their hearts and minds, Father, right now of the aftermath of shipwrecked relationships, things that did not go right, Father, that destroyed even the image that they have of marriage. Father, I pray that you will take corrective measures in them right now to bring about a renewing and a fresh hope for a future, Father. One, one thing I do know, Father, as you see it, there is no age in marriage. There is no age. And so, Father, I pray that true maturity comes through knowing you. True life and true love comes through knowing you. And so, Father, that we will have a, the intimacy and the determination and the mind to seek you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, knowing that as we seek you first, all these things shall be added unto us, that we be examples of you in nature and in character. So I commit every single thing, every word, every expression, I commit it unto you this morning, and I pray that it will continue to serve to multiply and bring increase and bear much fruit, bear much fruit in the lives of your people. Right now, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise be to God. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Anybody um, just want to share? Um, just want to reflect, just want to say something, you are open to do that right now. Um, praise be to God. Elaine, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to um, go over Psalms. You know, as I was praying before, that in there it picks up some of the words where I was praying, what God prayed through me. And it's like having that fear. Fear is fear when you're afraid, but with God is that absolute respect towards him, that you want to front around and making sure everything's neat and tidy, things are in order. That's that level of fear. And when he says about removing our transgressions, east as far as, far as east is from the west. 
But I just want to say, just point out, these are what the things God was saying through the prayer. So what he's saying is, he's removing all of these things. It is happening. So he's got room. We've got room to show that love, that compassionate love towards each other, because he mentioned about caring and having kindness. So I just wanted to see, show you that if you remember, as I was saying in the prayer, it's written here in, in the Psalms. God just confirming that. So we can love one another. We can move on. We can have a new day because his mercy is renewed. What we, our old thoughts of yesterday doesn't have to come into the day. Things can change. And he's making it very clear because he does have the power and we have to choose to do what he wants us to do what is right for us, what's right for him. So um, that's it, very short. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine, um, for that expression and just building on what has been already shared. Confirmation. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else um, want to say, share anything, uh, just um, expression or an experience? that uh, you can relate to, even as I was talking, you're thinking, yeah, sure, I, I remember that. I, in other words, I'm sort of uh, the subject of what has happened, whether you see yourself as a victim or the perpetrator of it, um, whatever the case might be. It'd be good to hear from you, you know, the practical aspect of um, what I share, the reality of it. Um, Keith, go ahead. Um, this is kind of, yeah, I was trying to stem a lot of my tears coming out, but it's tears of hope and tears of joy. Um, the reason why I say that is because God freed me from it. Um, I had three horrible relationships and it was always on the stem of argument after argument. And uh, this is the reason why I don't like confrontation. I never rose my voice, never kind of illustrated, even though I might get mad inside, I never let it out. I either walked or real talk, I took it out on myself. So I internalized it and then it manifested elsewhere. But um, it reminded me of something my granddad, I, I put it in the chat, something that my granddad said to me, I can't do it in the West Indian accent because my granddad had such a deep West Indian accent. It was like, wow, are you blended with African or something? Because it's more than one accent blended. But he said to me, whenever you get into a relationship, even a friendship, wait until the first argument. Don't cause it, don't force it, but wait until you get your first argument because the true sense of an individual will be displayed, whether they hold themselves back or whether they just go full guns blazing. You know, society now has the, the statement of, you say it like it is, no, 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 no. A person who is not conscious of the words and the weight that it carries will never fully understand you because they just need to get whatever's on their chest in their perspective out. And it's made me very cautious of that. It's made me very mindful of my interactions because remember that Jesus says to us that we are responsible for everything that we do, everything that we say, everything we intend, everything that we might mention or uh, act upon. And if we're not conscious of these actions, these things will be the, the kind of reward for what our behavior, our thought is, our conversation is. So when I think of what my granddad used to say to me, it was like, yeah, but do I need to argue? No, you don't. You might have a, um, a different viewpoint and arguing is okay if it's done in a, in a clean, corrective manner, not just for the individual that you may be with, your partner, but also for oneself because you have to take recognition. I remember before when I went out with Daniel and Joe, we went around Hyde Park and I said to them that I... Trust me, I have a notebook for everything. I study everything. So when my partners used to argue with me, I used to bring out a notepad and pen. And me, people think, mm -hmm. huh? I said, because I don't want to make the mistakes again. So if I write it down, what is it with a pen? What is it with this valuable tool? They say pen is mightier than the sword. But if you realize it, you'll realize that when you write things down, you remember it better. Even for me as a dyslexic, 
I like to share the scriptures because it helps me to remember them, not just in sharing them, but it helps me to remember them. It kind of imprints it deeper while I search for them. So I used to write down what my exes used to say. I still have some of the notebooks now and I still, okay, yeah, I see her point. I might have been, oh no, but she's wrong, she's wrong. In my head, I may be thinking that, but the thing is, if you get to listen to her point, I actually spoke to Donna about this yesterday, so thank you God for this conversation and this, this powerful tool that we all have in the devotion. Um, I said to Donna yesterday that in me writing these things down, I got to a point where I got to write things down for her and instead of us confronting each other, she would write things down for me. So then when we go apart and separate, I can read what she was trying to say and she can read what I was trying to say. And in that, it's, it's his own therapy because I realize my own mistakes. I realize my own faults. I realize my own intentions. I realize my own actions or inaction that helped correct us both. That by the end of the night, trust me, most of the time we will be going, walking down Bournemouth Beach, laughing like we're school children, chasing each other while the brother, her child was sleeping in a pushchair. We changed the whole narrative. We changed the whole perspective because at the end of the day, when you get angry, that's all you're going to breathe. That's all you're going to think. If you have yes. a bad day at work and you come home, if you're going to still conversate that to your partner or to people who you're living with, that means that you haven't got over that anger, which means it stays with you. It festers in mm. you. And we have to learn to let it go and trust in God. Leave Amen. it with God. That's why we say take our troubles to the altar and leave Hallelujah. it there. If Thank we don't you, leave it there, it's going to fester in us. This is how the yes. enemy will work. This is why mm. sometimes when I, it used to baffle me when I used to go to work and I used to kind of live in a shared house with I think seven other people and oh it's Monday and I'm thinking why do people feel like that <laughs> firstly you're going to a place at work where you're going to get paid so you can do the things with the money that you're wanting to do so why are you unhappy but then I realized it's because of the attitudes it's all the things that we meet it's all the stresses we meet it's all the conversations that we don't want to hear but then I thought to myself do I need to carry that though no we have to be able to you know look at everything how jesus especially now as a deeper christian than i was then i was contemplating christianity then now i'm deeper into the thought processes and thinking wow if it doesn't edify jesus if it doesn't edify something i can grow from is it worth it no is it something that can empower me or i can help to empower somebody else whether consciously or subconsciously no then it's not worth me speaking it's not worth me talking it's not worth me getting my voice out so with this today's society and saying things like just say it like it is be cautious because like the scripture says as out of the mouth the heart speaks if that's in your heart then is it really worth you speaking it out if it's not going to encourage somebody say if you've got a partner and they're always asking you questions to nag you to to bring you down or to to say all these different things or vice versa i'm, not, I'm, I'm never going to put this generically by it it's both ways if she's always asking you, oh, you know, I don't like that shirt that you put on and you ask her why, because I don't like it on you, but not giving any other conversation. If you like the shirt, put it on. Same thing with the, with the females. If you like that dress, put it on. It's not about the partner. If you're always going to ask their opinion, you're always going to be stunned. It's like a form of manipulation and you don't realize it. Be very cautious. Be very cautious. How do you feel in that dress, in that shirt, in that trousers, in the, even though it might not even work with matching your outfit? But if you feel good in that, live on that, breathe in that. Same thing with your opinion. I always say, and I'll say this to probably the end of my days, an opinion, when it's in your head, stays there. But the minute you speak it out, it's now a statement that you have no control over what it does in the atmosphere. So mm. somebody could take full offense to it. Oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't intend that. It's, it's not your intention, but was it worth you speaking it? Even if it's an, oh, because you're hurting me or because you're harming me, we have to be so conscious of one, the thought, and two, the action that follows, which is the speech. I call it brain mouth disease. It has to pass your brain first. But if it doesn't, it's coming straight out of your mouth and it's skipping the brain. So it comes straight out. You feel it, so you have to say it. And because you have to say it, you now can't take it back. I used to laugh every time my brother on the DJ records and he used to do that. And he wind it back because we can't do that. 
We cannot do that once we speak it out. Once that word is said, it's sorry is okay, but the thing is it shouldn't have needed to get to sorry. So we have to be conscious of our thoughts and our processes. This is what the Bible teaches. That's kind of what I wanted to share. I like that. That was powerful, Brother Keith. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Amen. Thank, thank you, Keith. That was wonderful. Amen, um, amen. Sometimes we've got to think before we speak. As you said, as Keith was saying, you, see, you can't just speak everything that comes to your mind. No. Because you could be causing a lot of hurt and a lot of pain um, and a lot yes. of damage. Your mm. words are, 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 are like daggers. Yes. They're like daggers and it can mm. it can wound the other person. So mm. you have to be careful. Mm. Yes. Sorry, I can't put my hand up. Um, Go ahead, Dolores. <laughs> I just want to say um, I like the word that you use, um, Pastor Chris, cultivate. I love that word because you have to train yourself. Train yourself in everything that you do. And as Brother Keith said, be conscious of what comes out of your mouth. Because I've seen word, um, heard so much that, you know, one word, and it hurts so much from time for the whole. It's sometimes one word, sometimes all when people are 50, 60, that one word that was said is still hurting. Yes. You know, so we have to be careful when we speak, because the Bible tells you that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so, you know, we have to think about others as well. And the Bible even tells you, it says, whatever things are good, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, these are the things that we need to think of. And when we are thinking about others, think, see them as the way that God sees them. And if we train ourselves, it's not going to happen overnight, you know. You have to train yourself to be kind, train yourself to be loving your own, your husband, do things together train yourself to work it you know because you can you imagine i call it i don't know so i say energy can you imagine your energy about around your two people you're in a house and you're not speaking to each other what kind of energy is that so if you cultivate the thing you know make it beautiful and color it it will stay it's a work and if you're prepared to work at it it can happen because god would have said it's not good for man to be alone if he didn't know it's a beautiful union so it's all about our attitude as well and how do we see things and try to create that love because he said everything grow better when love is around it. So that means that there's something, there's something, I call it, I don't know if it's the right, right? Just say the energy that is around the thing. If you have a plant and you treat it proper, give it all the love, give it all the nutrients, you will see how lovely it develops. And this is what we have to do when we are around each other. I'm not saying, you know, we are going to get it right all the time, but we train, keep training ourselves, keep training ourselves. And I compare it to a plant when I used to go to the farm, you would weed around it, you would, you know, you would mulch it up, you know, you would fix it all up, give it all the nice treatment because you want it to grow beautiful. And this is what I think we should do it, you know, with your partner, keep doing the nice things. Even when the person, you don't think it should be done that way. But if you keep showing love, because the Bible tells you, regardless of what, we must continue to walk in love. And this is what we need to do because the words are there. Everything is there that is beautiful. So it's, it's your attitude, how you come across as well. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dolores. That was beautiful. Beautiful. If, if, if we just listen to the words, what Dolores is saying, think about what we're saying. Think about the damage that we can have, um, cause to somebody. Um, you know, when I was little, my, my siblings used to say, oh, we're going to say some wicked to Gracie jokes. That's what they used to call it. Um, they used to make fun of me and tease me, put me down. And they used to call it, they used to laugh. They said, ah, oh, let's tell some wicked to Gracie jokes. And they were just being wicked to me. And um, that really affected me as a child. I was so insecure, timid. I was scared to do anything because I know that if I put any, if I put a foot wrong, you know, everybody would be laughing at and having, making fun of me. And it, and it just made me like really withdraw, go into my little shell and it really damaged me. So, but words can really hurt you. I'm telling you, 
is sticks and stones will break your bones. And they say words won't hurt, won't hurt you, but words can really, really hurt you. You know, I'd rather they, you know, did something else, but the words were like, is what damaged me and hurted me so much. So yeah, words can, if those words can stay with you. If your teacher says to you, oh, you're not good, you'll never come to anything. I don't think you're, 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 you can get through, um, you can be this and whatever the dream is that you had. And the teacher puts a wet blanket on it. It's just like, it just kills your spirit. And you might, you, it might kill your dream. You, you know, you, you, everything that you really wanted to do, you know, just the words of that person putting you down, telling you you can't, it just, it just devastated you. So yeah, we've got to be so careful. So thank you, Dolores. Thank you. I'm going to go to Beverly next. Thank you, Bev. Beverly. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Um, Daniel had his hand up before me. Oh, sorry. Um, Daniel, you put, you put it down, but yeah. Oh, you, ahead, you see, Grace uh, and Pastor Chris, I had my hand up, right? Oh, I'm so sorry, Daniel. No, 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 no. But then I was like, hmm, do I really need to say this? But then I'm like, you know what? Let me just say it. Let me just say it, because I believe it will encourage one person. But I hope it doesn't um, affect anyone in terms of, like, their childhood. So I'm just going to be brief, okay? Um so I grew up in a in a violent um, physically and spirit and spiritually physically and emotionally um, um, uh, parents my parents right so I grew up looking at that so when I got to about the age of eighteen I decided so they divorced when I was ten but then when I got older and I became eighteen years old and started like finding interest in women I decided to go to kickboxing. So I went into the kickboxing uh, into the kickboxing industry um, as an 18 year old. But the kickboxing that I went onto was my uncle invited me. So my uncle invited me, and it was with adults. So I was 18, and everyone was over the age of 40. Everyone was over 40. Now, because of that, I was there with over 40 year olds, and they were fighting. Right. So they, when they when they got the gloves on and everything like that, sometimes they wouldn't even wear gloves, people. And um, so I was quick. I was like a fast little kid, 18 year old. They were slow. They were old men, right? slow. But when they hit me, it hurt. When they hit me, it hurt. I, I got knocked down. I got knocked down, but I, I came back up. I got knocked down, but I got back up and I kept getting knocked down. I kept getting back up. And I was like and in the end, I was like, yeah, this is. I was actually finding like it was fun. Uh, it became fun. And the, the reason why I'm talking about this is then when I got into a relationship with women, it actually helped me out because I was not violent to the women. I, I did not touch the women with, I did not beat them up or anything. I hugged them. I kissed them. Okay. I, I got a bit too affectionate sometimes, you know? So, you know, you've got to, like, like Grace said, you have to think, you have to think of what, what everything you do. So my point is, I don't know where the point is to this. I'm hoping I encourage someone, like whatever family, whatever you've grown up in, whether it's been violent, whether you've had no mum and dad, whether you had a mum and dad that were beating each other up. My mum and dad used to beat each other up like most days. And, but it's when you get older, when you get into the word of God, when you, when you have a new, re, renew your mind and your body into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you become peaceful, you become love, love, peace and joy and, and kind and everything. And like you love, like everything is just beautiful. So I hope I've encouraged someone. I, really, like I was putting my hand up and then putting my hand down, putting my hand up, putting my hand down. And that was obviously, that could probably be the enemy saying, don't tell them this, don't tell them this. So I hope I've helped someone, whether it's, whether it, I'm sorry if it's too, if it's too much words, if it's too much um, for your past, where you remember your past, I'm sorry about that, but you, sometimes you have to break the past to go to the future. So in Jesus' mighty name, I pray and may the word of God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. That was very, very, um, very, very insightful. Thank you for sharing that because um, some, some children, they've grown up seeing their parents fighting, 
and beating up each other and and it has a negative effect on them i mean you were you were one of the few kids that it didn't have a negative effect but most times when you've come out of a, a volatile um uh, atmosphere experience that that attitude usually transfers to the kids and unbeknown to them they start um um it's like learnt behavior and they start doing that to their partners start beating up on their on their wives and their so um i know i've known it to happen and I'm, and when when I, I look back to find out what their childhood was like, I found out it's because their, their their dad was very abusive to their to the mother. And that's what they've learned. So sometimes it's not good to expose children when you're having a fight. You know, I'm not saying, you know, you it's not it's not good to expose kids, that's all I would say, because it can have a negative effect on them. So thank you for sharing that, Daniel. Um, yeah, Beverly. Hello. I just want to say thank you, Keith, and thank you, it's it, Dolores. Wow. <laughs> and Daniel. Keith reminded me about um, when I was younger and uh, I had this red dress it was a halter neck. And uh, the person that I was going out with, he said he didn't like it. And I wasn't showing anything. It, the dress wasn't low, it was just bright. And he said, I don't want you to wear it anymore. And I had to make that decision whether I wore that dress or I didn't wear that dress. I don't know, there's a fine line because I do know someone that her husband doesn't like some of her, her clothes, but it's because she's very kind of like hippie-fied and he likes her to dress, um, I'm going to say normal in bracket. So she can, she can wear those stuff when, she, when he's not around. But when he's there, he likes her to look in a certain way. So I don't know, is that is that good? Is that bad? And what Dolores was saying is that we have that same opportunity to learn how to treat people. Instead of, you know, until the husband comes, how do you treat other people? That's your training ground. Because if you can't treat people with respect and, you know, speak to them in a certain way, you know, when you come to meet your husband or your wife, you kind of take that same behavior out with you. So, yeah, and Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, I just remember stuff yes, when <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> thank you. That um, for ages I used to remember what went on in the house, and that that made me. I never wanted to go home because of the atmosphere, and it's not until I got older that I realized that was the issue because I'd prefer to stay in hospital and where hospital is, it's pain. But for me, it was, it was a place of not hearing anything. But I, I have to say that, that that was when they were younger and as they got older, especially my dad, he, it was my dad, really. He was, he did something to me. And um, I ended up in hospital. And then um, when he used to pick his hand up to hit me, 
I said, um, if you ever hit me again, this time I will open my mouth. And he used to tell me that I was cheeky, but it wasn't that I was cheeky. It was that he was out of order and he was being a bit of a bully. So I stood up to him because I reminded him that I, I'm not a child anymore and I would report him. And that actually played a, a part in my life that I, I, yeah, anyway. All right, thank you. Bless you, Beverly. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Bev. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. Beverly, I, I know I know it's hard, but as kids, you know, of my my generation and your generation, all our parents knew was beating. That's all they knew. That all mm. they knew is you beat your kids and yeah that's the way to punish them and to make them learn and the amount of beatings that i took as a child i i you know even at 16 i was getting beaten i was thinking i'm i'm 16 mm. and i i i just wanted to run away from home because i'm thinking at what age do you stop beating your child <laughs> I'm a teenager, I'm still getting beat. But yeah, I think that damaged me as well. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, Beverly, for sharing that because in those days you couldn't report your parents, otherwise you get thrown out of the house. Hmm. My mum, she she just she said, don't don't say anything. And the way that um my leg was broken. There was no way when I said that I fell over, there's no way that the way that it was broken, it was a fracture, not broken, but the way that it was done, the, the nurses, the doctors, none of them believed. And they, when um, my parents went, each time the doctor and the nurses came and asked me and I I just wouldn't say anything because of my mum. So I kept quiet. And I think my I think what is so painful is that my dad never ever said sorry. And um I was always getting told off and not my brother. So yeah, that does have a, a, a detrimental to the way that you think about yourself. And you, yeah, you don't think yourself as, um, I suppose worthy of, of proper love. But anyway, thank you. Um, thank you, Beverly. and. Um... As I said, um, um, thank you, Beth, for sharing. I mean, this this is like bringing up. Thank you, Daniel, for starting this off. Actually, because uh, this just is just the childhood memories of growing up. It was just disciplinary, disciplinary, and you know, you 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 lived in fear of just getting up the next beating. So um, thank you for sharing that, um, Beverly. Um, I'm going to go to Marcia next. Marcia. Marcia, are you there? I'm here. OK, go ahead. Here, but I was just setting the sounding the alarm out there so that I could get this little respect of quietness. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm moved by everything today, all the sharing, everything. I'm just, um, 
And uh, the Lord has, uh, the Lord gave me a word in the night and I want to share that, but uh, as uh, Daniel and Beverly was uh, speaking, they really like moved some stones in my memory. And, uh, and, I, and I was memory I was gonna say that, um, when I was when I was small, like Beverly said, when I was small, um, I had an injury from my mom. She hit me on my shoulder with something, and I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I couldn't even lift my arm. I was crying, crying. And uh, she brought me to the hospital and she said to me, don't tell them that, that I hit you with this. So when I went there and they were trying to move my hand, my heart, my, my, my shoulder, I was, it was agony. It was, and they put it in a sling. They was trying to find out to me what happened. I told them that I fell over, but they couldn't, um, they were saying that, because of the feeling where they feel the bruising, it doesn't look like falling over. And as Beverly spoke, I remember the pain that I was going through. And you know that I never remember that before, but I remember the pain to the point I couldn't lift up my arm and I was in sling. And when I went back to the house, they just fixed the bed so nice and put me in there. They were sorry, you know. I, I can see that they were sorry that I was going through this because now I've exposed something that they didn't want to know what was happening. But yeah, um, memories are um, memories of childhood. They go on for life. That's why it's good as as the environment for uh, the environment, the institution to bring up children should be so so pure, so transparent, so clean, so, so that we can bring up um, generations of children that will have good reflection, good memories, you know? Yeah, so one, of the, one, one, one the main thing that I wanted to speak of is the Lord spoke to me um, and he said, this season is the season of reset. Reset. He said, we all find ourselves in different situation, different position, right? Whether it's in our relationship, our marriage, our family, our, whatever situation you're in. God said that this is the time for reset. He said, don't feel that because you're in a comfort zone, you should stay there. It's a time for reset. We are just coming, we are just coming out of one of, a major um, con uh, how could I put it? A major pandemic or attack, right? And there need to be a change within the family, within our life within our position. And what God is saying, this is the season for reset. Reprogram. It's like, if you have, um, say for instance, if you have a battery in a clock and you see that the the clock is slowing down, it's losing time. The clock is still working though, but it's losing time. 
That means your battery needs to come out and you need to put a new one in there. That's another word for reset, yeah? Um, sometimes we could be in a situation where there is no change at all. So we need to reset, reposition ourselves, right? Because this is the time now for us to know that as we come out, as we move forward, we're coming forward with power, with might, with demonstration, right? And God wants us to be a witness for him. So like, for instance, Camilo yesterday, he spoke volumes from where he was, and I don't even think that he realized, but from where he was, he showed that God is a God of signs and wonders and miracle, because what the enemy would have liked to do to him is wipe him out. But even in the midst of his situation, he is there reaching out to others, making an example, testifying and sharing, right? And he's also reflecting to see maybe what could have been done differently or what would have, what he would have liked to happen if it was on a different level. And then he spoke of, why did I not have this, this kind of platform or something like that to help me while I was going through? So, it's like there's a time that God is saying, look, wherever you are, wherever you are, whether you think that you're in a safe zone, whether you think you're in a lovely relationship, whether you feel that your, your relationship is breaking down, whether you feel that you're crashed, your back is up against the wall. God said, don't mind that. He said, reset. So what God wants us to do is enforce our mind, renew our mind. Renew, be transformed from that situation. Be in a place of growth. Like the sister just spoke, he said, it's training. It's digging around the roots. It's about like you've got a tree or a plant, your relationship, you dig around it, you, 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 you work at it, right? Amen. And, and Amen. it's that period of time we are in for new things to come forward from wherever we are. None of us is in a comfort zone. None of us should be in a comfort zone. We need to break out of where we are at. So there is a better place for all of us. There's a room for improvement, right? Always find a room for improvement, a room to expand, a room Look at Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace, right? They've been married for so long. They've been through a traumatic trauma lately. But look at them, they look like they're falling in love all over again. Having love feasts for us every Amen. month. All those things. It's, it's, a, it's an act of new things, you know? And I just think that God is saying, come on, it's no time to sit down and, and lament, it's time to step forward and let me show off myself through you. Hallelujah. Yes, you went through mess, you went through a breakdown, you went through a violation, but is you're the one I want to show off my glory. Amen. Yes, you know, when I, when I, when I saw uh, Minister Keith for the first time on the platform, I said, whoa. This man is, he is handsome. And I'm, I, I, listen, Pastor Keith, <laughs> don't even try and die. Cloud my eyes. God has his hands on you. And Amen. it doesn't matter what you think your situation is. You are outstanding. And it's Amen. not that like you're just physically uh, 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 handsome. You are, when you open your mouth, I'm telling you, woo, woo. Yes. 
Praise the right? Lord. And Thank yes. you, Jesus. So let us all look into our life and reset. If you think that you don't need to set nothing, I'm all right. Well, I'm telling you, the next season you might be in trouble. Right? Because the next season is coming. It's going to be harder than the one that just gone. But if we all reset together, that means we reprogram together, we, we join together, we magnet, magnet, magnet together, we link together, we chain up together, we pray together, we travail together, we encourage each other, and we just reset. Yeah? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, Marcia, thank you so much. Oh, gosh. So much she said there. So much about reset. We've Thank just Jesus. come through a, the, one of the worst pandemics that we've ever experienced in history. No one has been through what we've been through in this last uh, year and a half. It hasn't happened in our world before. The history has taken place and we are the survivors. We are the ones that are going to make a difference. We're the ones that God is grooming and cultivating to bring hope to the world. People are hopeless. People are failing. People are, are, are disillusioned. People's mental health has gone through the roof. Mental illness. Because of the isolation, because we... We're not being connected and we can see that we're not, God didn't make us to be an island on our own. God made us to be interactive with one another. You help me, we strengthen each other, we encourage each other. And yes. that's what we're doing right now. Amen. Because of the encouragement, because of the, 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 the word and the prayers that we, we come and we, every morning, it, this is the strength that we're, that we're having. You know, when I look back and I think, how did I make it through this year um, or even last year? I, I just believe it was the prayers of the saints. And I believe it was us, God used this time that was a negative situation to really bring something positive and something to build us up and to get us connected and to get us in unity and to get us stronger. And as Marcia said, we're coming out of this now. We need to come out differently, not be the same old, same old as how we were before. This is a complete turnaround. And this is a time for change. This is a time for reset. So, you know, when you have that reset button and you, you know, you got your stopwatch and you want to reset it and you bring it back to zero. Let's bring it back to the zero point where we can start afresh, start Amen. anew. Amen. Start anew. All those things that we had, all those dreams and all those creativities and all those things that we had inside of us that was buried. This is a time now to get them out. Amen. This is a time now because we, we, we've been reset. We've been reset and this is a new, this is a new, this is a new church, a new body. People all over the world are realizing, you know, if they didn't know God before, then they have to know him during this season. Because you can't just, this is not a play thing anymore. This is reality. You have to depend on God for every single day of your life. Every day we're breathing, we're, we appreciate that. We appreciate life now. Before we just used to say, ah, oh, just get up, don't even say thank you, Jesus. Amen. We never used to say thank you, Jesus. We never used to pray. Prayer means empty. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's Prayer true. meeting, it was the least attended. The least attended. It's true, Grace. It's true. Prayer meeting, we go to concert, we go to 
um, party. We go to all the celebration, but with prayer meeting, we're not there. Hey. We're not there, but God is saying prayer is the key. Is the key. Yes. Is the key. We've been missing it. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been yes. missing it, but yes. God is raising yes. up. He said, my house, this is what Jesus Probably said. Called. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer. Amen, Grace. So Jesus said that. Yes. How much more plain do we want it? Jesus. Amen. He didn't say a house of socializing, house of playing games. And when he saw them doing all the selling and carrying on in the temple. Lick them out. Lick them down. Ask and them out. Kick, kick them over. He said, what yes, is this? So. What is yeah. this? You yeah. not missed it. Yes, Grace. You missed it. You, you're doing all, all this, all this, ever, everything else except praying. Jesus. Hallelujah. My house, the same thing when he kicked over the table, it says, My house shall be a house of prayer. Yes, Grace. We have. <laughs> we oh, it. We're not going to no prayer meeting. Hallelujah. We're not attending no prayer meeting. It's only because of the pandemic. Jesus. Why are we meeting? You get me going now, Pastor Grace. You get me going now, Sister Marcia. Jesus. Jesus. Don't stir me up now. Don't stir me up, Marcia. Don't yes. stir me up, Lord Pastor Grace. Lord have mercy. Up, yes. You're speaking so my language. There wasn't You're no speaking pandemic. my language. We're still, we're still going on doing our own thing. Jesus. Lord of mercy. Speak, Grace. Holy it Spirit. took a pandemic to get us out of our bed early in the morning. Yes. To seek God early. Yes. Let this be a wake up call. God is speaking. He's it. It. The pandemic. I'm not saying um, it was meant for evil, but God is really raising up His church now. I'm telling yes. you because we realize we have to pray, pray without season as well. Yes. Because without prayer, we can't make it. Jesus. So yes, Marcia, we need to reset, refocus, new restructure, realign everything, re, re, re. Yes. Rewind, rewind, yeah. rewind. <laughs> My God. My God. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. Abba, thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know you're speaking to us this morning. And Lord, I give a prayer up to us. Lord, thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you're here, new creatures, new creatures. And we're looking to you. You're so good. We're looking forward, Lord. Paul says, let's press forward to mark the heart which is Christ Jesus. We have these experiences, Lord. It's been good for us. We've come from different backgrounds. Yes. Lord, it's been good for us. But Paul said, we press forward. We look ahead. Yes. Hallelujah. Paul says, do not look at the things that are temporal, but look at the things that are eternal. Hallelujah. And so now we're pressing forward, Lord. Even the world are talking about a reset, a reset world system. They talk about resetting, resetting the world. The Lord, you are doing a new thing. You spoke to your prophet. Mm. Hallelujah. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Mm. And before I do it, I will reveal it to you. You shall see it. You shall know it. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you this morning that I'm looking forward to the new thing you're doing this season, the year 2022. Yes, Lord. Year, the year 2021. I know you're going to do something great things but Lord, i'm looking forward to the great things you're going to do in the year 2022 and then i'm preparing myself by your spirit hallelujah so i thank you and i bless you this morning in jesus name amen amen hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah praise be to god there is a 
presence of Almighty God upon this platform. And, uh, you know, so many things have been echoed today. We, we, we heard the echoing of God, his character, his nature. We've spoken about traumas of the past. And God is just really healing us. And he says, the word is reset. Cast all your cares upon him because he careth for you. You don't have to carry the weight of the past with you. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets your path. The turmoil. But God is gracious. And this is a new season. This is a, new, this is a time of new beginnings. Things that have laid dormant in your life because of uh, a lack of expectation then. Now we have expectation in God. All things are possible now to you that believe. And there is a time of setting and moving on. Sometimes we run the race. The race comes to an end. <laughs> You have to go back to the starting line again for another race. And uh, you can continue to be winners in Christ. It is Christ that causes us always to triumph in him and through him. And uh, I just really want us to be strengthened. And uh, we're, we're talking, you know, obviously we're talking about uh, still singlehood, still relationships, still marriage. But you see, we've come from a different perspective this morning. And that's the way God would have it. By his spirit, God will have his own way. And I thank God for all the contributions this morning. Um, praise be to God. And I really want you to just take cognizance of everything that has been said and make this the foundation in Christ that you build on for the rest of your life. And I know that it's been very emotive. Um, people have spoken about their past. But remember, say, remember what the word of God says. We take no record of our past. Don't make the past impinge upon your present and your future. Don't let the baggage of your past stop you from doing what God as truly a sign for your life. Come in to your best days, into the last days, your best days, last days, but best days. Praise be to God. That's what God wants us to do. And so be encouraged in the Lord. Be encouraged. Praise be to God. Um, Marcia, have you put your hand back up? Yeah, I just can I can I pray over the word, please? Yeah, go can ahead. Over that word. Well, I just want to say thank you, Lord. When you spoke to me in the early hours of the morning, I got up and made a note of it. It was just a few words reset. Father, you know, Lord, you always speak to me about the year, the year to come in advance. And Father, I believe, I believe your word. Lord, wherever we are, wherever we found ourselves, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, lift us and carry us. Move us out of the position. Change our circumstances. Father, we need your help. We can't do this on our own. Lord, take away every plan of the enemy to hinder us, to cause us to be set in one place. Lord, to, to, to stay in that comfort zone, to stay in that place where we feel that we cannot be touched. Father, help us to avail ourselves. It doesn't matter what we've been through. Yes, 
We all went through different things, but we still are our father's child. We still are our father's pick me. He will brush us off. He will dust us off. He will put a plaster on our wounds. He will heal our pain. He will hear our cry. He will answer us because we are his children. Father, some of us might think that we don't have a problem in this world. We got things going, but there's others that are going through. Help us to bear one another's burden. Help us to know that we are our brother's keepers. Father, you know, you, someone might have plenty and another man might be in lack. Help us to be good administrators of wealth and finances, Lord. Lord, it's a time, Lord God, that we've never seen before. You said in the last days, tribulation, troubles, perilous times. Lord, all these are all end time signs. Why is marriage breaking up? Why the family home been shaken like this is all end time signs. Father, it is all the end time. The enemy is on a rampage. We pray, Lord, that you are the one who is the beginning. You are the end. You know what stages of life we are all in. Father, you said in your word, we know the the. The, the, the time and the season. We know when it is winter. We know when it is summer. We know when it is spring. We know when it is autumn. But Lord, we don't know the time and the season we are in in the spirit realm. Help us to connect with the end time clock, the spiritual clock so that we may understand all these things that we are going through when we shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, earthquake in diverse places, uh, that which they talk about global warming. Uh, it's not global warming. The Bible spoke about the angel was going to pour out uh, his boil upon the sun uh, and the sun was going to be burning the people. But instead of the people turn and repent, they're going to curse God all the more. But yet, because of man, they push it up and put words to it so that man doesn't even see what is going on. But we are in the end times. We pray that you will seal all of us in your blood, Lord. Seal all of us in your covenant, Lord. So that when we cross over, we will cross over safely because we are your children. And no matter what we go through, we are as strong as the weakest link. So let us hold on to our brothers in prayer. Hold on to our sisters in prayer. When they going through, when they going through being backbone, he said, we all need somebody to lean on. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you know when we go through hard times, you're going to bring the best out of us. Father, when we go through rough times, you're going to make us shine. When the children of Israel was in Egypt and they were going through oppression, they tried so much to break them down, but they were multiplying all the more. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We pray you will reset us for the new season. No one will have to ask us where we are. But God, you would have reset all of us. Well, no matter the situation, there will be growth and progress next year. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. And amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. 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 Hallelujah. We are in the end times, but in the best times. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that you're in the best cycle of your life cycle 
of your life. It's the expectation of that which God has called you to. And this has to be a time of affirming and confirming and a sense of knowing that God is going to be glorified through each and every one of us. Praise be to God. So I, I want you to really just leave this platform with a sense of, you know what? Yeah, I, there is a hope for, the, for today and there is a hope for tomorrow also. And that starts with and through me in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. So we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia, for that expression and for the heartfelt prayers. Dynamic in all its working. Heartfelt. And uh, I just want to, Keith, have you got a song there? Um, yeah, just um, I want you to, as Keith um, ministers this song, I just want you to meditate on the words and uh, we're going to celebrate and reflect as we leave the platform in Jesus' name. Right it's over. only just begun. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. It's over. The best is yet to come. Amen. Oh, yeah. The best is yet to oh, come. Oh, yes. Not over. It's Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Until God says so. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord. He has the final word. He has the final say. Final say. I don't care Hallelujah. about the bill that you receive. I don't care about that report that you receive, whether it yes. be a doctor's report or a, a, a tribunal report or whatever. It's not over until God okay. says it's over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not over. Say. It's not over. Whatever the condition, it's oh. not over. Hallelujah. Mm. It's not over. This is a reset time. Hey. This is a time. This is a time appointed by God, assigned by God. Amen. And the best is yet to come. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Whose report will you believe? Oh, yes. Amen. Will you believe the report of the Lord? I will. The Jesus. end is yet the beginning of a yes. new season. Amen. Uh, so it's not over until yeah. God says so. Who Praise God. Jehovah has the final say. Amen. Have you got that song, um, Keith? We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna sing it out with that song. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're gonna celebrate with that song. Who oh, has yeah. the final say? Amen. Jehovah has the say. final say. When they said you would not amount to anything, Jesus says you are everything in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. They say you wouldn't get anybody. It says, Amen. I'm all that you need. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they said you ain't got nothing, say I've got everything. In when Jesus Amen. says yes, all nobody things can consist say no. in Amen. Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, reset. when they say you ain't got no parent, no mother and no father, say I am a hear of the father and I'm a joint here with Jesus Christ. I am strong in the Lord and in strong the power in the of his might. might. It's not my might, it's his might. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise be to God. It's not over until, until the Lord says so. Praise the Lord. Yes. yes. And the mm -hmm. fact that you are alive tells me it's not over. Amen. The very fact that you Glory. are alive today says that there's so much more that God wants to give you. Oh, yes. Amen. So we're going to celebrate yes. as we leave this platform. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Go ahead, Keith. 